Hello and welcome to this talk about applying to Oxford. I'm Dr Imogen Gould. I am an Associate Professor in the Faculty of Law. I'm also the Admissions Coordinator for the Law Faculty and a Fellow of St Anne's College. So the first thing to understand about law admissions is to understand what we're looking for. And all of our testing is geared towards trying to detect these things in the people who apply to us. Now, we get around 1,800 to 2,000 applications every year, and we have to whittle them down to about 220. So it's a, it's a tricky job. And it's helpful, I think, when you're applying to us to understand what is it that we're looking for in the candidates that we select. So number one is that we're looking for reasoning ability. We want to see how people think and can justify their answers, the reasons they give in support of the positions that they take. Now, this is evidenced by their speed of thought, although if you're someone who takes a little while to come to what you think, that's fine. We have time in the interview for that. Um, we're interested in people who are sensitive to language. Lawyers really care about words. We use words to describe concepts, to draw boundaries between um, particular behaviours, which which behaviours might be lawful or unlawful. Um, and lawyers need to be very analytical when they pull apart legal texts or they think about concepts and rules. So what we want to see is people who can do these things um, and give reasons as to why they think a distinction might be made or that there is a particular reason why a word is chosen or what is being captured. So bear that in mind in all parts of your application. So in your personal statement, if you can think of ways to demonstrate that, that's great. Um, and we'll be looking for it when we look at um, your answers in the interview as well. So when you're doing the interview, just keep in mind, demonstrate your reasoning ability, tell us how you think, explain your working in a sense. We're looking for communication skills. Now, many legal, um, many legal jobs involve talking or they involve conveying information uh, through written media as well. But what we want is someone who can clearly convey an idea and give via that um, expression really reasoned responses. Can you explain what you think and share with me your reasons? Can you communicate those to me? So again, in your personal statement, in the interview, try to demonstrate that if you can. And we also want application. So law is a very demanding degree and it takes a large amount of self-directed work, a lot of time in the library, reading through complicated, nuanced texts and cases. And you need to be really, really prepared to apply yourself to that. So we're expecting you to work at least 40 hours a week. Many people work more than that. Um, and so you need to be really enthusiastic and motivated about your subject to be able to do that. Which college? Well, you can make an application to a particular college if you want to, or you can make an open application and we'll assign a college to you. Um, you should try to choose your college based on the one that you think is a good fit for you. Now, a good fit might be you love sandstone. It might be that you want a more modern college. You might want a really old college, depending on what you like. You might want a really sporty college, a really overtly academic college. There's a college for everybody, really. Um, but what I would say is do things like talking to people who are there already and ask what's your college like what's its personality like find out a thing about things like the rent where you get to live what the rooms are like what the tutors are like all of those things should shape your choice now it may be you apply to one college but you're invited for interview at another college we simply shuffle people around sometimes to make sure that we spread all the candidates out in various ways um, and also while you're in oxford you might be interviewed at another college as well you, so you might end up receiving an offer from the college at um, which you originally applied, or you might get an offer from another college, or indeed you might get a, what's called an open offer, um, which means that you are coming to Oxford, you do have a, an offer, um, but it's the case that it might be at a different college. So how do we look for these things? Well, we have a range of things that we take on board in your application. One of them is your school record, of course. So we look at your GCSEs, we look at your A-levels, um, we have your reference, the personal statement, which I'll talk to you about specifically, the LNAT and interviews. So when we look at your school record, we are looking at all of your results, but we also contextualise them against the background of the school that you went to. And so it's important if you think there are things we need to know about your educational background that you tell us about them in your personal statement. So if something went awry, your GCSEs don't match with what you thought you should get because there was a problem, try to get your school to put it in the reference, but it may also be worth putting it in the personal statement. 
Um, so we're not looking for for a big dramatic story, but if some if there's something we need to know so that we know what an accurate reflection of your ability would be, put it in your personal statement and tell us so that we are aware of that. We're also very well aware that people have different educational opportunities and we do a lot to try to take account of that when we think about what do these results tell us about someone's aptitude for law and their, their abilities um, if we select them, how likely are they to do well at the degree that we're admitting them for. So the big thing you're probably interested in is what to write in your personal statement. Now, one of the reasons for that is it's one of the few things that you can actually control at this stage. Um, and so people put a lot of emphasis on it. Now, of course, if you think about it relative to the other bits of information we have, um, it doesn't tell us an enormous amount about you. Your GCSEs tell us about your school performance, how well you, you do at things. Your LNAT's testing a lot of the, your intellectual skills and, your, and so on. But the personal statement can do a lot of useful things, but you need to understand um, how it can do that. So often people are told there's some sort of formula, there's things you need to put in, um, and then we essentially tick them off, and if you've done them, then that helps your application. And that's not at all how we read them. The way to think about it is to think about how would you read it, and what would you take from it if you were in the position of an admissions tutor? So, of course, we know someone can help you write it. Of course, we can't verify what's in it. Um, but what we can do is get a sense of who you are from it. So if you approach it as though it's a formula and you put in the things that you think we're going to tick off, you've actually thrown away the opportunity to show us who you are as a person, who you are as an individual. So I'd really urge you not to do that. I'm not looking to see, have you read this particular book, Tick? Well, that's an extra point. That simply isn't how it works. And if you think about it, it's not how you would think about it either if you were in our position. Rather, what we want is for you to show us why you motivated to do law. So it will go to that thing that we're looking for and use the things that you put in to demonstrate that. So one thing people tend to do is tell us they've done work experience, but they don't tell us much about what they experienced with it and why that made them motivated. It might be it made you less motivated. You might have found it not very interesting. And then it made you think, I'll do something else. That's fine to tell us that too. Um, what you shouldn't do is tell us things that aren't true. So if you went to sit in the magistrate's court and it wasn't very interesting, you could tell us that and you could wonder why that might be. And that would be fine too. Um, if you're going to tell us about books that you have read, that's great. But simply telling us I've read X book isn't particularly illuminating. But what is illuminating is if you tell us I read this book and this is something I took away from it that made me really think about this in the law. That's a great thing to tell us. So show how this demonstrates you've got the skills for a law degree. Similarly, if you play sports or you play um, musical instruments, so I mean, those are not things that demonstrate that you're going to necessarily be a good lawyer. Um, so simply telling me I, I do these things isn't really helping me to think about whether I should invite you for interview. But what is helpful is if you use those to demonstrate something about yourself that is a skill for a law degree. So let's say you are really excellent um, at a particular sport and you had to work very hard at it. It might be really interesting for me to be told about how did you manage the burdens of your training and balance them with your studies. And that would show me that you're motivated, you're committed, you're self-directed, you're organised, which are things that are indicative of somebody who's going to do well in an Oxford degree. So think about it that way. And also don't don't be so formulaic that you lose the sense of who you are. That some of the best personal statements I've read are not following the formula that you've often probably heard about, but actually are the sorts of statements where somebody really showed me who they were as a person and piqued my interest. And I thought, gosh, you seem interesting. I'd really like to meet you and talk to you about why you want to do law. But also, you know, it's important to work on the personal statement, but it is only one small part um, of a big matrix of information. But finally, check that your teachers have put into your references, if you can, the sorts of things that might be important, if you had a personal issue, if you had a problem in your school, um, and if they haven't, or you can back it up in your personal statement, but it's your one chance to really talk to me directly and tell me things that you think I need to know. And that might be that you are the bursary kid in your school. And that might have really shaped your experience. Or it might be you've changed schools lots of time or you've had a really interesting background with you, um, in where you've lived and that's really generated your interest in whatever it is. Tell me those things, but tell me about you. 
the LNAT. Now, you'll be taught to you in other sessions about how to prepare for the LNAT. The key thing to understand with the LNAT is it's designed to test close reading and analysis. That's what the questions do. So when you look at the paragraphs that you are asked to read, read them very carefully and closely. The information you need to answer the questions is in there, but it's about working out the best answer. Now, sometimes the answer will be very close. You might think two answers seem like legitimate answers. That may be true. And then it's about thinking about which one is the most defensible answer. So really reason it through. Take your time. Some questions on the other are harder than others as well. So don't let that put you off. But really absolutely do the online practice test. You know what it will feel like to sit down and do it because it is a slightly unusual context in which to do a test and you want to practice so that when you go in to do it for real, you're ready and you know what's coming. In your essay, what we're really looking for is can you make an argument and explain yourself? Now, that doesn't mean a polemic. It doesn't mean you say one thing and you just say this is the truth. It doesn't mean we want you to tell us lots of information. I don't expect you to remember lots of statistics and data and put it in. What I want is to see somebody who can say, here's what I think on this question. Here's why I think it. You might want to say, here's some reasons why people might think I'm mistaken or disagree with me. And here's what I'd say in response. So think about it as, here's my argument, here's a counter argument, here's my response to that, and draw it to a conclusion. Make sure it's clear, it's calm, it's measured, and it's reasoned. That is what we are looking for. Now, we have bursaries, you can find this online, but if it's going to be a struggle for you to cover the cost of doing the LNAT, then there is support for that, and uh, that is online at the LNAT bursaries page. The interview. Now, of course, the Oxford interview is surrounded with all sorts of mystique, um, but really, um, many candidates afterwards, when I meet them after I've selected them, tell me how much fun they actually found it, which sounds a little unusual, but in actual fact, they found it stimulating and it wasn't off-putting. And the reason for that is we are not interested in making you feel small or bad or nervous. In fact, if you think about it, it would be really quite irrational for us to do that because what we want is for you to show it your best self so putting you off undermining you all of those things would not be in our interests we want you to do your best so that we see everybody at their best and then we can see what you can all do and select the people who we think are best suited for this degree so the people in that interview are on your side they are hoping to see something great from you and that's what their questions are designed to do. And so if they feel a bit tough, just take a breath and remember that, that that is what someone is trying to do. They're trying to help you demonstrate what you think. Draw it out of you. Test your knowledge. Test your reasoning. Now, sometimes that is stressful and it's intimidating. But you need to remember that what you can always do is say, can I take a moment? Can I take a breath? Can you repeat the question? That's absolutely fine. Can I change my mind? Absolutely. And in fact, often there might be a series of questions and you answer a couple and then they pose another one and you rethink your early answers. And go, Oh, gosh, I, I don't think that anymore. Now you say this. Absolutely fine. That's showing flexibility. It's showing openness. That's a great thing. And then rather than getting um, head up about it, instead say, OK, let me explain to you why I'm changing my mind and talk it out. Tell the interviewer all of that is hugely valuable to help them understand how your reasoning process is working. Now, we have seen the whole range of people getting upset. And of course, we've all been in interviews that are stressful ourselves. If that's you, people will understand. In terms of things like what should you wear and so on, what should you do to prepare? I'm absolutely not bothered at all about what you wear. I just want you to be comfortable. So wear what you want to wear. If that's a suit, absolutely. If it's not a suit, you just want to wear your normal day-to-day -day clothes, it's absolutely fine. In terms of how to prepare, you don't need to come in with any knowledge because, of course, knowledge of the law isn't a testing criteria. So you can read law books if you want to, but often people find it makes things more problematic for them. Sometimes they go down um, the wrong trail. And of course, our questions are designed for people who don't know any law. So you won't need that. But what you should get good at and practice and what you, everybody can practice is explaining why you think something. Get all the people around you to ask you questions and tell them what you think. Pick an issue in the newspapers and debate it with your friends. Get that practice of taking what you're thinking and saying it out loud and explaining it. Because that is what the interview will be like. 
Some of you will get lots of prep in your schools. Some of you will get none. We know that. We absolutely know these things. And in the interview, we're doing our absolute best to take account of that. Um, some people will be prepped and told exactly what someone thinks is going to be the interview. In my experience, a lot of the time, that person doesn't know. I certainly don't go and tell people what's going to be in my interviews. But what I do do is I try to calibrate to the person I see in front of me. I think about them. I look at how they're feeling and I try to help them do their best and show me what they can do. So just keep hold on to that the whole time that you're doing the interview. And you can practice being OK with that by being put on the spot a bit by your friends and say, OK, tell me why you think this. Tell me why you think this. Well, I don't think you're right. And here's the reason. And then give your explanation. That's the best thing you can do to practice. You can watch an interview, see what it looks like um, uh, online. Um, you may be applying for law with law studies in Europe. There's absolutely no problem with applying for it. It is competitive to get into. But remember, if you apply for it, it's completely separate from your application for the three year course in the sense that whichever you apply for, so straight law or law with law studies in Europe, they will all be considered together. And all of the candidates are considered as a pool and the studies in Europe part of it is considered separately after the applications are considered for law. So what will happen is in the three days of, of admissions, I will look at your application in my college and I'll set aside whether you've applied for law or, or the European course and I will make my decisions. Then at the end of those three days, I send my decisions um, to the faculty. And if I see that you have applied for law studies in Europe, I will nominate you to a committee that considers that aspect of those courses separately. So what that means is your offer for coming to Oxford altogether is not related to your European studies part of that offer. They are done separately. So it may be that committee gives you a spot on that course, then you will do the four year course. It may be that committee doesn't. That will come back to me and I will make you a straight law offer instead. So it doesn't matter and it won't affect your chances in any way. And that's why the statistics look different, that the, the offer rate is lower for that. Um, but it doesn't mean that it reduces your chances of coming to Oxford in general. It simply means that not everybody who applies to Oxford and has made an offer in law who wants to do European studies can do so because it's oversubscribed. Finally, Opportunity Oxford is our new bridging course. You will be offered a place on this if this is something um, that we think is appropriate. Um, we will put you into that course. What it will do is give you some support over the summer. Um, there will be an online component. There's a residential component. Um, and it's about helping people transition into Oxford um, if there's somebody who we think needs a bit of support to do that. You don't need to make a separate application, just apply. And if the university decides you're eligible, the college um, offering your place decides that and they decide whether to put you on the course, we pay for all of the expenses. Um, and so it's really just there to support people who might need a bit of help um, making the transition from their school to Oxford. Thank you very much. And the final thing I would say to you is simply apply. Don't let anybody put you off applying. Um, the worst that can happen is you don't get an interview or you don't get a place. That's fine. But we really want you to apply. We can't see your application. We can't offer you a place unless you make the application to us. So don't let people put you off. Don't let anybody talk you out of it. Just do it. Just apply.